Maybe you've had this issue. Maybe you have it right now. It's not uncommon. It's very common in the industry to see cars not have all the speeds on the blow motor. And a lot of people don't realize, they say, oh, I have no heat, I have no heat. Well, that's why I always say to my customer, do you have heat or do you have a blower motor? Do you have air coming out of the vents? But I want to talk about the symptoms like that, one speed, what causes it, and how to fix it properly. All right, so now you know you have a blow motor problem, right? You think you have a blow motor problem. No air coming out of the vents except for maybe one speed. Well, I'm here to tell you about a resistor. Now, some people are gonna say it's the resistor only. And other people are gonna say it's the blow motor only. Well, I'm here to tell you in my years of experience, you do them as a pair and there's a reason. They're electrical. And if one is faulty, the other one is following, and it could be damaging one to the other. So when it comes to heating systems, a lot of people just see the end result, and that is the blower motor. What is it doing? It's blowing the heat out at you or the cool if you're AC zone. And what happens and why, that's all they're thinking about, right, is the end result, the blower motor. But there's two other major factors in this. There's the blower motor resistor and what feeds that, the switch. So if you just keep replacing a blower motor, blower motor, or just keep replacing the resistor by itself, you're not doing the whole system justice. The switch. 90% of the time is never gonna fail. A resistor takes the voltage from the demand, which is the switch, and it takes it, say you have 12 volts in that motor to get a lower voltage, needs a lower amperage. So that's where the resistor comes in. It's in its word, the name of it, right? It resists power going through it. So it stops the amount of voltage or amperage going to that blow motor, so it's a softer airflow. And the higher the amperage, the more airflow. So this is gonna break down so fast from all that voltage change. The motor only has one speed, but it's how much amperage goes to it is how much it lets air out. So this is a common failure, but that motor will burn out just as fast as this does. And if you just keep replacing the resistor, you're gonna get melted connectors. Very common on a lot of resistors. Doesn't matter what year make or model, you will see the connectors melting, whether they start turning brown from overheating. And that's from feedback inside these. These are modern ones, they have a circuit board in them. Some of them now have aluminum modules. Uh, there's all different types. The old school, well, those are real easy to diagnose because they were small coils with little resistors on them for amperage flow. And you went from thin coil all the way up to a thick coil. And you could take a test light and actually test it to see if it was getting its power source and how much amperage is coming out. That's kind of old school now, but now we talk about circuit boards and how the voltage flows and amperage flows right to that blow motor and that produces the amount of speed that comes out. So if you do need these parts, don't forget to check us out at 1AAuto.com. Don't forget, get them as a pair. It's not really that expensive and it just stops you from having to do it again. So let's talk about the locations of blow motors and resistors in like all vehicles, anywhere from car, truck to SUVs. Uh, older ones, well, a good portion of them were located in the engine compartment. It was a heater box up against a firewall and they were metal. That's, that tells you my age now. Listen, they're plastic now and they're usually located right under the dash. It's like a whole heater box assembly. So right over there under the passenger side is where you're gonna find probably a good portion of the blow motor and the resistor. Some of them are side by side, sometimes the resistor's further away. Just look for the four wires or six wires, a little square plug, and it's gonna feed the two wires going into that blow motor. Now, some European cars, some without saying, you have to take the whole cowl off just to get to the blow motor. It's a dual blow motor, it's about this big. Wiper transmission comes out, heater firewall, whole box comes out. It's a job. So if you're asking how difficult it is, it does depend on the kind of car you have. It can go anywhere from one to 10. All depends on what you're driving. All right, so now comes the fun part. We're gonna do the repair. Well, we're gonna do the diagnosing part and the repair at the same time. We're gonna get a test light, check for power going to that resistor from that switch and to the blow motor and see what kind of parts we need to purchase from 1A. Let's do it. All right, so I'm over here on the passenger floor. I have my little test light and I'm gonna check for power and ground at the blow motor first. So key on, not running, and I'm gonna go to the first notch of speed, which we're getting nothing from the blow motor. So right now, with nothing on, I've got a two wire system here. If I back probe either one, I've got 12.1 volts. And then on the other one, I should have nothing. Yep, I've got zero. So actually I got 12.1, 
and 12.1. Ha ha. So as a senior tech, I'm going to tell you that that's right there is a problem. We have cross power somewhere. So you should have ground on one side, power on the other, and then different amperage as you turn that switch. But right now I'm going to go for the step one. We're going to put it in first mode. Let's see what we have for any voltage down here at this blow motor. So this first speed, 12-1, 12-1. Next speed, 12-1, 12-1. Now this is the speed it works on, right? The highest speed. All right, highest speed, only speed it works on. There's my ground, and there's my battery voltage. So I'm only have a ground on high speed. So now we're going to shut it off. We're going to take that resistor and let's check out the resistor. All right. Wow. Look at that resistor. That is cooked. Look at all that circuit board. She's cooked, melted right down. There's not much left of that. You can still see the circuit board underneath, right? So this resistor, way too much heat, just took overall a couple of years and damaged itself. And this thing could be burnt out. And the reason why is because the actual electrical motor on the blow motor is sending back too much current. And then here's the connector side. Look at the corrosion, how, how it wicked itself right through. So what happens is when it wicks it through like that, of course, it's going to wick right into that harness. So a lot of people don't realize, maybe they don't pay attention, but wire is like, just like a faucet, like a pipe. If the corrosion's going through that, it's going to go right up through that wiring harness, right? Just keep going until it does all its damage along the way. Whenever you see stuff like this, you want to stop and fix it before it gets too bad. All right, so now we're just going to plug in the new resistor. Now let's turn the key in the on position and start that blow motor test. Speed one works now. Two. Three. And four. Well, I hope this video helped you out. I really did enjoy making it because I had to fix this vehicle one way or another, and now we solved the problem together. Don't forget to buy your parts at 1AAuto.com, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell because it turns on all your notifications and you won't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching.